Hello YouTube! Right, today um, I thought I'd do a little bit of a breakdown. Um, I've got two of my favorite multimeters up on the bench. Um, the Brayman TBM829 as well as my Fluke 117. Both of them are true RMS rated multimeters. Um, I've basically got the Fluke on the bench next to the Brayman just so that I can show you the Brayman. As far as features go, the um, Brayman meter has a lot more functionality, having micro amps, uh, temperature, etc. etc. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that right now. For this moment, we're just looking at a direct comparison between these two meters. Um, at the moment, I've got it sitting on a 5 volt voltage power supply. Um, you can see they're pretty much reading about the same. I'm just going to wing it down a little bit. And uh, yeah, 4.124. Wing it down a little bit more. 1.491, 1.490. They're pretty much on par. Uh, yeah, you know, it seems they're so close as damn it. Um, they might just have different rounding and stuff like that. Uh, there we go. Let's take it up a little bit. Now this is where the Brayman obviously has a step up. It maintains an extra digit there on the side, being a 6,000 count meter. But for some reason it's going over the 6. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it could be an 8,000 count meter. I haven't actually read the spec, but we'll look into that now. As you can see, the Fluke's already dropped down to two decimal places, while the Brayman's still maintaining its three decimal places. Accuracy, still excellent. Very good. Very, very good. So far, I'm very impressed with this Brayman multimeter. Um, I use it quite a lot on the bench, but um, people that want to know about a little bit more about them, there we go. Now we've dropped down. So at 10 volts, um, we dropped down to two decimal places. So it's in effect a 10,000 count multimeter. Um, yeah, not bad at all. So accuracy, there's nothing to complain about so far. It's slightly slower than the Fluke with updating speed, but when I'm saying slightly, I'm slightly, I'm talking milliseconds. So, hell, so far so good. Uh, that's my power supply maxing out there. I could go up to 60, but I'm not going to worry about that. Very, very, very impressed so far. Right, so now we've basically put the Brayman next to the Fluke. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lose the Fluke and we're going to concentrate just on the Brayman, the uh, TBM829. Right, back onto our Brayman. The Brayman multimeter has a feature where you've got auto check. Basically, a brief explanation of auto check is it'll automatically detect whether you're measuring AC or DC and it will make the adjustments to the, the ranging scales or the selection, should I say. Um, it's also a low impedance input, which is nice for various measuring tasks and stuff like that. You have your voltage AC, where you've also got your frequency of your AC voltage being displayed above there. You've got your hertz, your dBm. Then you've got voltage DC. Now, along with the voltage DC, you've got other little options over here where you show voltage DC and voltage AC. I'm not sure if that's for ripple or whatever the case may be, but I'll have a look into that and give a further review later. Then we have our millivolts to two decimal places. We have our millivolts AC, which is to one decimal place or possibly down to two, depending on the, the voltage being measured. We've got our ohms our continuity tester and of course timing and you've got dual temperature if you have a look on the display you've got T1 and T2 so you can actually have two thermocouples hooked up at the same time then we've got capacitance and diode test pretty much your standard diode and capacitance tests milliamps and of course very important for an electronics meter microamps. So that covers the basic functionality of the meter and what it can measure. It does also have the feature whereby if you are for argument's sake measuring voltage and um, you're about to measure voltage but you still got it stuck in the current jack, it does give you a warning. It's a PCJ warning to tell you you're not in the correct 
in the correct uh, mode. So now the moment we switch to amps, everything will go quiet because we're now in the right jack. If however you come back, it won't know. The only Thing with that, the, the reason for that is it does not want you to think you're measuring voltage and you create a dead short across the power source. So it's just a bit of a warning to let you know that hey, something's awry. This meter feels really good in the hand. It is a solid piece of equipment, really well made, solid. This one's been calibrated recently for me. Um, it takes a 9 volt battery. It does have PC connectivity options. I don't use that for this one. I've got other meters for that reason. And uh, yeah, all in all, fantastic piece of hardware don't think of it as a cheap meter because this meter here will set you back in the region of about 1600 to 2500 rands depending where you buy it you're looking at around two hundred dollars 190 dollars us worth the money yes um, for what you can do with this meter it is definitely worth what you pay um, it does have all the crests where you can measure uh, max and peak, peak max holds and all sorts of other fancy things. I'm not going to go into them. You can also do recording, um, basic logging and stuff like that. But uh, for what I use it for, this is my primary bench meter alongside several others. Great piece of hardware and I've had no issues with reliability, measuring stability or any such things. Thanks. Hey everybody. Yeah, I just did some homework on that uh, Bremen TBM829 of mine, and I've managed to locate the spec, which I thought I'd cover with you guys, just so that you know a little bit more about them. Um, the Bremen on the catalog ro ro shows you that it's got a 12 kilovolt transient protection. That's a 12,000 volt transient protection. That's pretty impressive, in my opinion. DC plus AC true RMS, DBM, duty cycle percentage. 4 digit resolution, NS conductance and more. It comes, well you can get ergonomic uh, magnet hangers, probe holders, whatever the case may be, but it comes with a tilting bale uh, etc which works very well. It can also be used as a hook such as you can see here. Um, PC communications, POG, bar graph, beep jack, crest, peak, record, min, max, average, relative, backlit, full features. Auto check plus um, low impedance, um, EF detection, electromotor force detection. So we can actually pick up um, electrical wires or live wires in the in the vicinity. Capacitance, uh, line level hertz. So it can measure frequencies at relatively low voltage, uh, half a volt, one volt, 2.5 volts, probably maximum. Um, temperature one plus temperature two. And let's go have a look through it. Okay, it shows a few. The one that I reviewed is the BM829, which is basically all these functions. So it's a four digit, and like I said, 10,000 count multimeter. Five over of a second, for one fifth of a second, I don't know what they're trying to say there, but it's fast measurements, dual digital display, 41 segment analog bar graph updates. 60 times per second. Okay, so the measurements update. Ah, there we go. The measurements are updating at five times per second. Well, your analog bar graph is updating at 60 times per second. Now, this is quite important because this is where you're going to pick up any slight fluctuations in voltages or measured uh, values that you're working with. 0.08% um, high basic DC voltage accuracy. That's pretty good. Optional purchase USB cable, intelligent power off, data hold, relative zero mode, audible invisible beep jack. That's what I showed you guys in the video where you plug it into the wrong jack, it'll warn you. AC, AC plus DC true RMS conversion, recording, crest, non contact electromotor force detection, so it can detect EMF, probe contact EF detection for more precise indication of live. I haven't tried that feature, but it sounds like it could be interesting. Auto check feature, automatic DC volts, AC volts, and ohm selection. Low Z volts to drain ghost voltages. Very good feature, that low impedance. Backlit, large, easy to read LCD display, DBM readings, 20 selectable impedance values. DC voltage from 0 0.01 millivolts to 1000 volts. Cool, that's pretty good actually.
AC voltage 0.01 millivolts to 1000 volts, AC plus DC pretty much the same range, AC amps 0.1 microamps to 10 amps or 20 amps for 30 seconds and it needs a 5 minute cooling off period. AC pretty much the same spec, AC plus same spec, ohms we've got from 0.1 ohms to 60 mega ohms, conductance, capacitance, ah 0 0.01 nanofarads to 25 millifarads, so 25,000 microfarad. That's not a bad range actually. Um, then you've got your temperature readings. Both of them are identical. This is the type K temperature readings. Dual type K temperature. I'll take it they're both the same thing. So type K thermocouples. Line level frequency from 15 hertz to 1 kilohertz. Logic level frequency from 5 hertz to 1 megahertz. That's not bad. Logic level duty cycle readings from 0.01% to 100%. Diode tester, fire retardant casing with battery access door. Replaceable protective holster with probe holders and tilt stand. Optional purchase magnetic holder. Uh, 600 volt general, ohm capacitance, etc. Input protection. So if you're on your ohm scale and you accidentally stick this thing onto a high voltage, you should be good. 600 volt high braking capacity fuses protected on current inputs. Transient protection up to 12 kilovolts, 1.2 over 50th of a microsecond lightning surge. Ooh, interesting. LVD meets EN61010 1 CAT 4 1 kilovolt. Very, very, very good. Um, yeah, that's a very high rating for a multimeter. Um, I think some flukes even battle to get that high at some points. So for those who only accept the best, CAT 4, 1 kilovolts. <laughs> That's so true. But anyway, yeah, they, that pretty much covers what this meter is capable of. Very capable meter. All the spec is here, and it is available on the internet. Um, accuracy is pretty damn good. So if you can find yourself one of these Bremen multimeters, by all means, go out and get one. You won't be sorry.